What's going on, everybody? We have a beautiful question on the board, which says we are to look for the value of x, for which x to the 6 is equal to 4 to the 6. Well, our first step towards solving this question will be for us to move 4 to the 6 to the left-hand side. So we have x to the 6 on the left, as 4 to the 6 crosses to the left, it becomes minus 4 to the 6. And this is equal to 0. Now our next step will be for us to write this in terms of difference of two squares. That means x to the 6 can be written as x cubed. And this can be raised to the power of 2 minus and 4 to the 6 is same as 4 cubed. And this can be raised to the power of 2. Well, this validates the law of indices, which says when I have a to the m, and this is raised to the n, this is equal to a to the m times n. So if these two powers can multiply, 3 times 2, it gives back 6. So this is correct. Equal to 0. So we have been able to write this in terms of difference of two squares. Now there is a property of difference of two squares which says when I have, for example, m squared minus n squared, this is the same as m minus n times m plus n. So we're gonna be writing this in terms of this. So this becomes x cubed minus 4 cube times x cube plus 4 cube. Very good. And this is equal to 0. So this is actually a property of difference of two squares like this. Now we have two cases. We have this first case, which is, let's call this case 1, which is x cube minus 4 cube equal to 0 and we have case 2 so let's call this case 2 case 2 is x cube plus 4 cube equal to 0 so we're going to be solving these cases one after the other now let's focus on the first case so from the first case you notice that we have difference of two cubes and difference of two cubes has a property of, let's say for example, when we have m cube minus n cube, this is same as m minus n times m squared plus mn plus n squared. So let's write this in terms of this property. So this becomes x minus 4 times x squared plus 4 times x, which is 4x plus 4 squared. So 4 squared. Very good. And this is equal to 0. Remember, we are just focusing on the first case, which is case 1. So this simplifies into x minus 4 times, this is x squared plus 4x and then plus 4 squared is 16. This is equal to 0. So there are actually two cases here. We have the first case which is x minus 4 equal to 0 or the second case which is x squared plus 4x plus 16 to be equal to 0. Now for the first case, it is easy for us to get the value of x by moving negative 4 to the right hand side. So x now becomes, as negative 4 crosses to the right, it becomes positive 4. Now for the second case, we see we have a quadratic equation. So we're going to be using the quadratic formula to solve this since we cannot factorize. So for this quadratic equation, our a is 
the coefficient of x squared, which is 1. Our b is the coefficient of x, which is 4. And our c is a constant term, which is 16. So this is a quadratic formula we're making use of. x equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So now let's substitute into this quadratic equation. So our value of x substituting becomes negative b. So negative b is 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's 4 squared minus 4 times a, a is 1, times c, c is 16, so 16, all over 2 times a, that's 2 times 1. So this simplifies into x equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of, we have 4 squared, which is 16, that's 16, minus so 4 times 1 times 16 can be translated into 4 times 16. It is still the same thing. Very good. All over, 2 times 1 is 2. So x now becomes negative 4 plus or minus the square root of. You notice that 16 is common. So it is very easy for me to factor out 16. Good. Now 16 divided by 16 that's 1, minus 4 times 16 divided by 16, I have 4, so this is 4, all over 2. So x now becomes negative 4, plus or minus. Now this is same as the square root of 16 times 1 minus 4 is actually negative 3, all over 2. 2. Very good. So we can actually expand this to x equal to negative 4 plus or minus. So this can be expanded as 16 times 3 times negative 1. Because 3 times negative 1 gives negative 3. So all over 2. Now we're going to be taking the square root of this one after the other. Making x to be equal to this is negative 4 plus or minus. Well, the square root of 16 is 4 times the square root of 3. And then times the square root of negative 1. The square root of negative 1 is actually iota all over 2. Now, notice that 4 is actually common, which means we can factor out 4. So x now becomes factor out 4. Now, negative 4 divided by 4, we're going to have negative 1 plus or minus. Now, 4 root 3i divided by 4, I have root 3i. That's it. All over 2. Now, take note that 2 here, 1, 2 here gives 2. Making the value of x to be 2 times negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 3 times iota. And this is actually two values. So the values, when separated, are we have x to be 2 times negative 1 plus, we're taking the positive side, the square root of 3 times i. Or the other value, x equal to 2 times negative 1. Now this time, take the negative side, negative the square root of 3 times i. That's it. So these are three values of x from our first case. So this is the second value, and this is the third value. Remember, the first value we got is 4. Now let's move on to our second case. So we call case 2. So for case 2, we have x cubed plus 4 cubed equal to 0. Now notice that this is sum of two cubes. For sum of two cubes, we have a property of m cubed plus n cubed. This is equal to 
m plus n times m squared minus mn plus n squared. Now let's write this in terms of this property. So this becomes x plus 4 times x squared minus 4x and then plus 4 squared. And this is equal to 0. So we have been able to write this like this. Now let's simplify what we have here. So this is x plus 4 times x squared minus 4x and then plus 4 squared is 16 and this is equal to 0. So we have two cases here. We have x plus 4 to be equal to 0 or we have this other case which is x squared minus 4x plus 16 to be equal to 0. For the first case, it is easy for us to get the value of x by moving 4 to the right hand side. So x now becomes, as 4 crosses to the right, it becomes negative 4. Now let's focus on this case, which is a quadratic equation. So for a quadratic equation like this, which cannot be factorized, we use the quadratic formula. So a here is the coefficient of x squared, and that's 1. b is the coefficient of x, and that's negative 4. So negative 4. And c is a constant term, which is 16. Now, we're going to be factorizing into this quadratic equation, x equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, let's substitute. So we have x equal to negative b, that's negative b, b is negative 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, b is negative 4, so I'm going to be writing negative 4 squared minus 4 times a, and a is 1 times c, c is 16. That's it. All of our 2a, that's 2 times 1. So this simplifies into x equal to negative times negative gets positive. So I'm going to be having positive 4 here, plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared is 16. Minus 4 times 1 times 16 is still the same as 4 times 16. The same thing. All over 2 times 1 is 2. So this becomes x equal to 4 plus or minus. Now notice that 16 is actually common. So I can factor out 16. Now 16, 16 divided by 16 does 1 minus. And then again, 4 times 16 divided by 16, I'm going to be having 4. So 4 all over. 2. So this makes x to be 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 times 1 minus 4 is actually negative 3. Now let's split negative 3 into 3 times negative 1 because 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So let me put all over 2 here first. So x is now equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of, so this becomes 16 times 3 times negative 1, all over 2. Now let's take the roots individually. So we have the value of x to be 4 plus or minus. Now the square root of 16 is 4 times the square root of 3, so I'm going to be leaving this inside of a square root, and then the square root of negative 1 is iota, so that is times iota, all over 2. Now notice that 4 is actually common, so we can factor out 4. 
So let's factor out 4. So we have x to be 4 factored out. Now 4 divided by 4, that's 1, plus or minus. Now 4 root 3 times i divided by 4, I'm going to be having root 3 times i. Very good. All over 2. Now 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 4 divided by 2, I'm going to be having 2. So this results into 2 times 1 plus or minus the square root of 3 times i. So there are actually two values here. So we have x to be equal to 2 times 1, going with the positive, plus the square root of 3 times i. Or x is equal to 2 times 1. Now this time, going with the negative, root 3 times i. So we have six values of x. So we've got four before, and this is five, this is six. Very good. So if you don't have six values of x, that means you must have solved the real solutions. And the only real solutions we have are x equal to four or negative four. So these are the only real solutions we've got. The others are complex solutions. Well, feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.